Hello everybody, welcome to another vlog. Today is um, February the 19th of 2018. Today we're going to be visiting Old Sturbridge Village and joining me on that tour is my cousin Charlie from, you know, Connecticut. He's been in plenty of my vlog videos. So, he'll be joining me there and it's going to be fun. This we might also make a drink run stop, maybe either 7-Eleven or somewhere else. There's not really any 7-Elevens close to here, so I don't know, but we'll see. All right, so we're now at Old Sturbridge Village right here. Pretty interesting. I'm sure a lot of people in the old times lived here, right, Charlie? We've been here before. Oh, you've been here? 18 something, are there? 18 times. <laughs> <laughs> but he hasn't been he hasn't been alive for 18 years that long. I'm almost been alive for 18 years. That's Oliver Wright Tavern. Must be the name of a guy who used to live here. Well, Massachusetts is definitely colonial because this was where pilgrims settled. Although that was all the way over in Plymouth, where they settled on Plymouth Rock. I actually visited Salem with my cousins last year in May, and we learned about the Salem witch trials. But wonder what historic thing happened in Sturbridge. Let's find out. And here is the main entrance. They got a lot of interesting stuff here, as well as some wooden sculptures, because wood shop was a popular thing out in this area. And all the flags of New England, Massachusetts, Vermont, Rhode Island, New Hampshire, Maine, and Connecticut as well as the U.S. flag. The New England colonies. Well, duh, but... 1800s people, this is not colonial era. Well, yeah, that, that was statehood, pretty much. <laughs> but they were still adding new states to the Union. These were among the first. And as, as Charlie says, they would be low-key mundane enough to have solar panels, which they didn't. No, well, I said if I was low-key mundane enough to have solar panels. <laughs> Obviously, they didn't have any technology back then, so they couldn't make This house is pretty small. Oh, yeah, definitely got a mind to my head here. People back then were not as tall as me. <laughs> This is what they call the small house, which is, they're not, they're not crapping you, it is a small house. Now this is beautiful. Some old historic views right here, and Charlie's just pretending to be savage and walk on this giant snow pile, which he probably shouldn't be in. <laughs> and this must have been their church. Very common back in the day and still common to this day. That's the point. I'm supposed to sound like a, an, a, a National Geographic historian with any with no knowledge. This must have been where they practiced church stuff. Like they all did back in the day. Plain, unadorned, and unheated. Definitely. I'm actually pretty hot. Huh. These church, this church doesn't look as professional as some of the other churches did back in the day when they had all those colored stained glass windows. This reminds me of when I visited Canada not a, over a year ago, back in August. Now that was pretty interesting. So this other clip on the tour right here is a family open farm. So this is where families probably lived and had to raise their livestock. So they could have them there mostly for food because you gotta eat. People gotta eat. So yeah, that's pretty interesting. We also saw a guy who made shoes and another guy who made pottery out of clay, which is what pottery is. I don't think I'm, I don't think I'd be the best tour guide, right, Charlie? All right, next part, 
There's a little covered bridge. And the cows left some of their calling cards on the ground as they were going through their tour because they bring oxen through here sometimes. Some parts of the water are frozen, some parts aren't. This is pretty interesting. They call this the Vermont Covered Bridge, actually. We also saw there's places like a sawmill where they chopped up all the wood. And a place where they used all the sheep wool. <laughs> eh, if only we came here during the summer. And they also have a tram tour, but I think it's easier when it's on foot. Gotta get that exercise out, you know. Hello there, little chickies. Just picking at the ground or something? That's fine, you do that. Bucka, 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 bucka. That's what they sound like. Uh, that's how I sound like a chicken. This here was the bank house. There's the fancy house over there. And there's another fancy house there, and apparently they're chatting up the one of the guys there over there, some news crew or something. You can see, you can do a little close up right here. A little guy interviewing him on camera. And down through here is. The other side of the village that I got on camera a few clips down. Pretty nice. After this, we plan on maybe, I don't know, getting McDonald's and there will be where I have my soda for the day because uh, Sprite Tropic Berry. We passed by McDonald's on the way here, so maybe we'll get McDonald's. I'm hankering for some chicken McNugs and a totally awesome Sprite Tropic Berry, which is currently my favorite soda in fountain form. All right, guys, I'm back home now, and I did not end up doing another clip between the span of being at the village and coming home because we did not end up going to McDonald's. We ended up going to Uno's to eat. I've not actually been to Uno in quite a long time, since 2009, I found out. I, I mean, my uh, school actually went to Uno for the play, uh, the guys in GP and all that stuff during the fall play back in November, but I didn't go with them for personal reasons. But, yeah. I had some of the pizza at Uno, and it was... Ugh. Pizza's good, but my breath reeked of it. So I washed it down with a Mountain Dew Arctic Burst I had from the fridge. Thank you, Revolution 13. And, as you can see, my tongue is blue. And this might be the last time I ever have Arctic Burst. Unless someone can give me a soda mix idea in the comments. Please do if you can. For my final club, I'm going to show you some little home improvements. My uncle came over here uh, while I was gone and did some wonders. Look, new ceiling fan. Finally, an actual working light in this house. This ribbon room looks brighter than it ever did before. And if you go out to the door that enters into our kitchen... I'm gonna unlock it. We installed, whoops, wrong light, a railing. This railing would most likely be helpful to my grandma who has to use this in order to get into the house. So, it's also safer as well. So yes, my uncle did some small adjustments, but still that big light in the living room really is awesome. Yeah, it was a fun short trip. I liked seeing the old Sturbridge Village, and that'll be that. I'll see what I do during the rest of the break and see if I can get a vlog in there. So, thank you all for watching.